Blog Talk Radio. Warning. What you are about to hear are the views of Travis Pope and the Oklahoma Tomcat and is not supported by the government. Agreeing with the hosts of this show could cause you to be targeted by the government and government agencies. You have been warned. The nays are 48. The nomination of Brett M. Kavanaugh of Maryland to be an Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States is confirmed. Sergeant at Arms will restore order in the gallery. Is there a sufficient second? The sergeant at arms will restore order in the gallery. Well, uh, good morning, Missouri. I think uh, uh, our host kind of jumped the gun there because he told me to play that at yeah. the beginning. At the- and he just, he started popping in and talking. Yes, I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> oh, you're not as perfect as you say you are. You're not as perfect as you say you are. Oh, Again, no, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm perfectly imperfect. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I knew you were coming up with something. <laughs> And to our listeners, this is a recorded show. It is not live. Yeah, yes, our our, our host is, our host computer is still. Uh, I mean, our uh, producer's computer is still down. Well, but, uh, but uh, as you guys hear, heard at the opening of the show, uh, the world's coming to an end. Uh, Brett Kavanaugh has is now our Supreme Court uh, justice. So the liberals are all dying. If it were so easy. <laughs> yeah, now no, now, now uh, abortion has been outlawed uh, throughout the United States, you know, and uh, what what some of the other claims they're making uh Brett gets uh. Confirmed as a justice. Uh, well, that's the only one I know of right now is the abortion. <laughs> Man, it's a big ruckus over one thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, mainly, mainly what it is is, uh, and I don't think it'll come up. Uh, what I do think what will happen on the abortion issue is let's let's say Oklahoma comes in and goes, well, we're going to put these uh, regulations in place for abortion. And then the abortionists uh, challenge it and they get it all the way up to the Supreme Court. Kavanaugh say, well, abortion is, uh, and this is where it will kill Roe v. Wade. He, 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 will, he will say, uh, abortion is a state issue, not a federal issue. Take it back to the state. Yep. Which is the way and it should that's, be. Yeah, and that's where and that's where Roe v. Wade on a federal level will be dead. It'll be up to the states at that point. Yep. And and here's my you know I got into a huge debate over this because I do believe it should be a state issue, not a federal issue. No one in the Constitution does it talk about even even when it comes to murder and you know if someone kills another person in a state, uh, the federal government has no say in it. You know, 
Um, so, you know, that's the way uh, I believe abortion should be. And I got a big debate over that with somebody. And, uh, <laughs> and my thing is, <clears throat> sorry, my thing is, you know, I, I told her, well, if you believe abortion should be legal no matter what, which it ain't right now, I mean, they do regulate, you know, I mean, it can be regulated to some degree. Uh, if you feel abortion should be a legal all the way up to day one of you know, then you talk to your state's representatives. I mean, it, that's where it belongs. You can make you have a say in your state. You know, but they don't want to do that. They want the federal government to regulate everything. Yeah, well, look. There's a reason why Democrats don't want abortion to be fully legal. They want to use Roe v. Wade as a political tool. How many yeah. times? How many times have throughout the years have Democrats controlled the House, the Senate, and the presidency all at the same time? How many times could they have gone? And said, and made and, and made Roe v. Wade federally through legislation. Yeah, I mean, that, that, and that's an argument I always bring up with both sides. I mean, Republicans and Democrats, you know, on both their issues. I'm like, I mean, we can say the same thing with guns when it comes to you know uh, federal gun laws. You know, I've, I've brought to Republicans, hey, you know, you guys had many, op- you know, many opportunities. To make, you know, to get rid of all these gun restrictions, you guys never did it. And same thing with the Democrats, you know. You're right. I mean, they had the power to make laws. I mean, unless you amend the Constitution, it would still be illegal, but hey, they don't follow the Constitution in, yeah, anyway. So they could have made, you know, a federal law on abortion. They never did. Yeah, because we all know, and there is, and, and hey, Anybody can, uh, well, you can't really call in, but you can message us on Twitter or Facebook page. Uh, um, um, but you can tell us anywhere in the Constitution where the federal government has the power over abortion. I mean, you can show us in there, in the, in the Constitution, if you can show us in the Constitution, here, better yet. Show me when the Constitution anywhere that the the judicial branch is part of the legislation legislative branch. <laughs> show me oh, where okay. those tell, show me where those judges have any say to make legislation. And and I'm gonna kill an argument right here and now. Because guaranteed it's going to be brought up, you know, uh, people, somebody is going to bring up in the, one of the comments, which, by the way, you can comment on this show uh, anywhere you see it. Um, I'm, I'm going to kill an argument right away because I hear it used so many times that I, I squash it. And that is the argument that Roe v. Wade is about patient doctor privacy. B.S. Because the page is, the, do, the federal government is in that office. The doctor cannot prescribe you anything he wants or anything you want. You can't do that, right? I mean, the government is involved in which, which drugs are prescribed. If there's doctor-patient privacy, you could go into a doctor and the doctor would be able to prescribe any drug around the world, right? Yeah. I think he can't do that. Uh, if you go into a doctor, and let's say you go into a doctor, doctor, one doctor says, no, 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 I'm, I'm taking you off of that medication because I don't feel good. And you go to another doctor, and that doctor says no. You go to another doctor, and that doctor says no. You go to another doctor, and he does. He gives you the prescriptions you want. What's that called there, uh, Travis, which is illegal on the federal level? You got me on that one. It's called uh, doctor shopping. 
if you remember, uh, a, ta- a, a talk show host was actually being investigated by the federal government on it because he did it. <laughs> uh, uh, what Rush Limbaugh got caught doing that. Uh, yeah, you can't do that. You know, you can't you can't shop around for do- a doctor that will prescribe you a, a drug that you're not supposed to be taking. Um, well, they so, should just went no, to MH- then, then they, they they should just go to MHMR then. <laughs> but uh, you don't have, and then still, uh, you know, uh, Roe v. Wade did not completely legalize abortion. Did. It? Go into a doctor and say you want doc, uh, you want an abortion one day before the baby's due. What, what's going to happen? I think every state that's illegal. So Roe Ro v. Wade did not give us privacy. I wish it did. If if Roe v. Wade did give us patient doctor privacy, I would be one hundred percent for Roe v. Wade because I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know, because I, uh, I mean, I do agree that you know the the government should not be in the doctor's office. I agree with that. But Roe v. Wade did not get to give us that. It didn't give us that at all. Yeah, yeah, and then these people go, well, you're not, you, you can't, you can't, you don't have any say so over my parts, but you want me to pay for it. <laughs> you know, do you real do you realize they wouldn't be able to they uh only the rich people would be able to have an abortion, no one else would be able to because uh uh the cost of it, how much money it goes into it from the from the, yeah. the taxpayer. Yeah. And uh and that's just the way it is. I mean, okay, you want abortion, fine. Don't ask me to pay for it. Don't, I don't want to know about it, and I don't want to pay for it. Your physical health Wait, has nothing, no bearing. Your physical health has no bearing on what national security, which the federal <laughs> government is supposed to take care of. And then, <laughs> huh? It's no to and it doesn't. <laughs> It doesn't. Your physical health has nothing to do with my nat- with the national security. Right. You know. Uh, there's millions and millions and millions and millions of people in the United States. Because you dropped out of the workforce because you have a baby... Has no bearing on me. I'm still going to drive. I'm still going to uh, deliver my loads. I just probably won't ever meet you, and I probably won't mm-hmm. ever meet you if you don't get dropped out of the air, what workforce. But I'm sorry, it's not my business to pay for your stuff. I don't care to pay right. for it. And they, and, and they want to bring up. Uh, uh, men uh, with uh, uh, erectile dysfunction. I don't want to pay for that crap either. Nope. What another man pecker is doing has no bearing on the national security. That government is not supposed to be involved. The federal government is not supposed to be involved in anything that has to do with uh, health or uh, any of that stuff. I mean, it's not supposed to be a federal issue. No. And I say, as far as the state goes, I think the the only thing they should do is determine. And really, I think the people in the state should do. I mean, you. You know, people, when when I, when I talk about, you know, what the state should do and shouldn't do, what I'm talking about is you have a say in your state government. It should be yeah. determined when life begins. Well, when does that state think life begins? 
you know. And then that, that I mean, because it is your local government's job to protect life, right? I mean, that that's my, that's from my understand. Um, not the federal government, it's not the federal government's job to protect life. <laughs> it's the state government. Yeah. Or the local government. Yeah. So, you know, when the, the big question is not about abortion, because even the people who are pro-abortion, I talk to them, and a lot of them does have a limit on when abortion should be allowed. So, you know, the question is, when do you think life begins? And then set it for that. I mean, to me, it's, it, it, to me it's real simple. I don't know what the big argument is. Well, uh, I've read some science uh, just recently. I looked up some science online, and it is pretty much a, a unanimous uh decision among scientists that life begins at conception. <laughs> yep, I, I, and, and, and you know, I, I remember learning that in high school. And, and the whole thing yeah. is because scientists say when a cell starts splitting, that's life. You know? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, yeah, you're right, and, and I often use that uh, against the anti-abortionists. I say, uh, if you think that life doesn't begin at the conception, then you're a science denier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, but but now, but you know, after a little bit, they come up with their own new argument. Now, is that yeah. well, just because life uh, life uh, begins at conception, it's not considered personhood. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that before. I'm like, so, 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 if it's not human, what is it? What's growing inside you? <laughs> I, you know, until they until they come up with a a a human female giving birth to a giraffe, you know, I, I don't think I can accept that as anything else other than a human. You know, I mean, and you can even use this on them. If you destroy an eagle's egg, because the eagles are protected, right? Uh, bald-headed eagles, anyway. If you destroy a bald-headed eagle's egg, they'll prosecute you, right? I mean, the liberal, even the liberal will be outraged with you. So uh, if an eagle is considered an eagle inside that egg, then why isn't it the same with humans? Oh, because it's not, it's, it's not, it's not feasible. You know, it's not the federal <laughs> government. Because of the fact that they uh, they they uh, want to protect other species, but not protect human life. Yeah. Human humans are not protected species. No, not you. Uh, well, we're overpopulated, so uh, of course we're not protected. Yeah. And 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 I think that's when the big and see when we look at. I'm I'm a type of person who likes to look at the root problem with anything, and you know when when you look at uh, these protests and stuff, you know we just opened up with that uh, sound clip there, uh, which uh, there's even more hilarious out of that. But uh, when you look at these protests like Ferguson uh, and even with the false allegations against people. I mean, we have the Me Too movement, uh, all these uh, political leaders that were falsely accused of uh, sexual misconduct and all this other stuff. The reason why you got a lot of liberals that are doing that and able to do it with a clear conscience is because they don't look at humans as being valuable. And this is a very no. bad road we're going down. Yeah, well, they don't uh, they don't they don't look at anybody valuable uh, unless it's to fit their base. I mean, we 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 seen that this week uh, that Democrats don't even care about um, uh, their, all, their women as they proclaim by them throwing uh, uh, Christine Ford under the bus. I mean, I mean, uh, and we, and we called that. We we knew that was going to end up happening. 
Yeah, I mean, shortly after after you know, uh, Frankenstein comes out and says that uh, um, uh, that she has this uh, letter, but the the source wants to remain anonymous. And then her office leaked out the letter to the uh, the source to the media. You know, it was it was on. They didn't care about her. Mm-hmm. This whole thing, this whole thing could have been done behind closed doors before Kavanaugh was even nominated. Yeah, and he would have never been nominated. You know. But there's a reason behind it, and let me let me play this real quick. Self-fulfilling problem. You demonize, and then you it, we call it the wrap-up smear. If you want to talk politics, you call it the wrap-up smear. You smear somebody with falsehoods and all the rest, and then you merchandise it, and then you write it, and they'll say, "See, it's reported in the press that this, 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 and this." So they have that validation that the press reported the smear, and then it's called the wrap-up smear. Now I'm going to merchandise the press's report on the smear that we made. And it's, it's a tactic, and it's, it's, it's self-evident. But I think I'm worth the trouble. No, and that is... Yeah, go ahead. Uh, well, that's what I'm saying. I'm going to put this in contents before any of our listeners message us on this. Uh, this was uh, Nancy Pelosi speaking to the minority uh, uh, minority uh, conference, um, and she was actually referring to Republicans in this speech, that she was blamed. This is what she is accusing Republicans. But we all know in the rules of radicals uh, that you always accuse your enemy of what you're doing. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, actually, you, you, you just you, you tackled exactly what I was going to say. You know, what was crazy about that is, you know, there she talked about the Republicans uh, accusing of Republicans doing that, and then they're turning around and they do exactly what they were accusing Republicans of doing. And uh, I'm... I don't know. It's, it's it's real bad that we even have to go down this road, you know. Uh, but it's really but, not shocking but, but either. Here, <laughs> yeah, but here here's my problem. Okay, now I have I, now the the playbook has been shown. Mhm. Okay, and this is and this is where I'm gonna I'm gonna ask uh, our guest that's coming on here in a few minutes. Uh, which we're having uh, uh, William Cagle on today. Um, But I'm going to ask him about this, okay? Because of the fact is this. By doing this, they are scaring future generations of ever wanting to run for office because they're afraid that they're going to bring up anything and everything or even make up something. In their past, you know, it don't even have to be true. She just said it. Falsehoods. Lies. Yep. Just to smear somebody. Yeah, she was blaming the Republicans for doing it, but for since Obama took office in 2008, they have been doing this over and over and over. They claim they accuse every Republican or de- uh, or or Libertarian. If you did not agree with Obama, you were racist, no matter what. You don't agree with health, uh, universal health care, Obamacare, you're racist. No matter what, you were racist if you did not agree with Obama. You had to 100% agree with him and not be white. If you're white, you're, you're no matter what, you're racist. What was that reporter that one time? He said there, there was a reporter one time. Uh, I know I can't remember which station he was on, but he said that was the chink in the armor. 
Yeah, and I don't that remember. Was the chink in the armor. <laughs> they fired you for using the word chink. So shoot that one politician down in Florida that uh, said we can't we can't monkey this up. <laughs> he was accused of being racist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, now we've come to the point where people don't want to run for office because they will make things up. If you become a threat to their their agenda, they will make something up to get you out of there. They don't even have to be mm-hmm. true. And that racist yes, thing being called racist them. and stuff, that's minor compared to what they're doing now. I mean, this is all out. I mean, what they're doing now is a lot worse than yes, even I'm what they did that. during I'm... Obama's time. I mean. Yeah, well, I was reading on political this morning on political. Political, okay? Which we all know political is left wing. Political this morning was saying that they need to be more ruthless. Hmm. They're not, because of the loss of Kavanaugh, they need to be more ruthless. What more ruthless are you talking about? They're already hunting these people down. They're already banging on the freaking doors of the of the Supreme Court. They're already crapping in the seat, uh, in the street. They're already trying to blow up bridges. What, what more ruthless are you talking about? Are you talking about a full armed civil war? Is that what you're talking about? Because I know you don't want to go there because half of you libtards don't like guns. You don't even know what bathroom to use, damn it. <laughs> Got a. Uh, Two and a half minutes left. Two and a half minutes left. Let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about greens. Um, uh, greens is uh, you can uh, order it by going to livepure dot com slash p t a t. That's Papa Tango Alpha Tango. Uh, greens is a great supplement. Let let's you know majority of Americans do not get vegetables they. Uh, want. I mean, my daughter, she'll avoid vegetables at all costs. But um, what we can do is we can hold her down and put a funnel in her mouth and have her drink a whole gallon of greens. <laughs> well, not really. But greens is a great way to get the vegetables and fruits that you need. Um, and uh, it has all the nutrients you need. And what's great is it's super greens. And super fruit, which is the the best that you can get. And here's another great thing: when you go to the store and you grab the container, because they sell these uh, the uh, powdered uh, vegetables, powdered fruits in the stores, and you turn that can around and read the ingredients. I, I challenge everyone to do this, and guaranteed you're going to find a, a artificial sweetener in it. Because you don't want to take these powders without any type of fruit, uh, any type of uh, sweeteners in it, because that's one of the things that's taken out of them, is uh, the natural sweeteners that's in the fruits and vegetables. But at the same time, they don't want to put sugar in it because they know majority of people that taking these uh, will avoid them if it has actual sugar in it. What's great about greens by Live Pure is. That it is sweetened with stevia. Stevia, look it up online. It's an all-natural sweetener. It's actually a plant, okay, that has a very – has no glucose level in it. That means diabetics can even take it. Uh, I have diabetes myself, and I'm able to uh, have stevia. So to get, to get it and get a discount, go to livepure.com slash P-T-A-T. Go there today. Check out all their products. They have lots of very healthy products. Livepure.com slash PTAT. We'll be back after these messages.
Dave, what are you doing? Just sending a gift to Dave2037. Who? Me in the future. I save a little money from every paycheck as a gift to Dave2037, so he can spend it on things like anti-gravity boots or a hologram Doberman. Something cool like that. I think Dave2037 deserves it. He worked hard. What are you getting Steve2037? I guess I was thinking Steve2037 would just fend for himself. Well, all right. But don't expect to be borrowing my anti-gravity boots. You want to have money in your future? You got to start saving now. Putting some money from every paycheck into a savings account or contributing to your 401k can make a big difference later. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free ideas and easy ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. That's feedthepig.org. Hey, let's just hope Steve2037 doesn't get his hands on a cold time machine because he is going to come back here and knock some sense into you. This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. Hello, libertarian friends and independent thinkers. This is Richard Castaldo for Congress. I want to thank Oklahoma Tomcat and the broadcast for letting me share a little bit about myself. I am running for Congress in Oklahoma's 2nd Congressional District, and I appreciate your consideration. Um, First, let me tell you that I I strongly believe in the non-aggression principle, and that philosophy guides everything I would do in politics and Congress, including my voting. And what it means is that I do not believe in or advocate the initiation of force as a means of achieving political or social goals. In other words, consent is everything. If there's no consent, then I'm not going to approve it. My platform includes the elimination of taxpayer funding for abortions, restore and protect the Second Amendment, protect farms and small businesses by eliminating needless regulations and property taxes, abolish federal income tax and propose the fair tax, abolish the IRS and Federal Reserve, protect cryptocurrencies from federal persecution, and restore constitutional ballot access through major reform and abolishment of the Federal Elections Commission. Cut government spending and pass balanced budgets. End the war on drugs and the prosecution of victimless crimes. Deschedule cannabis completely. Maintain and strengthen a strong military and prioritize our veterans. End global interventionism and unconstitutional wars. Eliminate federal restrictions on individual charity privatize marriage and adult consensual relationships, abolish the Department of Education and privatize Head Start through kindergarten, defend Native American lands from federal interference, protect and reinforce all parental rights, remove government sponsorship of LGBTQ discrimination and all racism, especially involving law enforcement and federal courts, restore religious and atheist liberty on public property and for businesses, deregulate religious organizations and churches. I think it's so important that we send someone to Congress this year who believes in individual liberty and the Constitution. Um, Just to tell you a little bit more about myself, I was born in Tulsa, Oklahoma in December of 1981 and grew up in Grove in the Grand Lake region. I graduated from Grove Public High School in 2000 and Oklahoma Wesleyan University in 2010. I have traveled to several countries and across the U.S. in ministry, both as a worship leader and a missionary. I've worked in retail and customer service for years, including as a store manager for a local radio shack. I'm now a husband and dad, a street pastor with Grand Lake Life, and a political activist dedicated to serving people wherever I see the opportunity. I'm running to represent our Congressional District 2 of Oklahoma in the U.S. House of Representatives because I want to remind Washington, D.C. that your life matters. I am not a politician. I would have no strings attached. I would be a fiercely independent voice for you, the people. I have the principles and courage to stand up against the establishment of both the Democrats and Republicans. I'll work tirelessly to restore your individual freedoms to live, to love, and to worship, or not to worship, the way you choose. As a father of two toddlers and native Oklahoman, I am concerned about our future as a society. We are all being crushed by the aggression of government, and it continues to damage our educational opportunities, our criminal justice system, our economy, our health care, the daily living of everyday people. As a proud member of the Libertarian Party of Oklahoma, I believe in a constitutional government that values individual liberty. 
The other political parties are consistently arguing about which laws they want to burden you with, but that's not the libertarians. We want limited government and self-responsibility. We want to get rid of, of over-regulation and too many laws, because that is how freedom thrives. I believe in a federal government that is restrained by the Constitution. I believe in restoring and protecting your full Bill of Rights, from the Second Amendment to the First Amendment to the Fourth Amendment, your rights to privacy. I believe in the power of capitalism. The free markets provide the best opportunity for all of society to succeed. My votes will be made public and I will be transparent about every decision. My Republican and Democratic opponents, Mark Wayne Mullen and Jason Nichols, will be owned by their political establishments, by the swamp and the lobbyists. But I will not be. Again, I will be fiercely independent. If you are tired of the corruption, if you are tired of the power struggle between Republicans and Democrat politicians who think their lives matter more, and if you're ready for constitutional rights to be restored, please send me to Congress. I humbly ask for your support and your vote on November 6, 2018, and in your early voting. I hope that you will make sure that your voice is heard and that, that you will share with your friends and family about Castaldo for Congress. Thank you for listening, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Again, this is Richard Castaldo, and I approve this message. God bless. Miss Producer is also known as Miss Giggles. You are listening to Political T&T on the Liberty National Network. All welcome, right, welcome back, back to uh, Political TNT. Yeah, yeah uh, we got it's pouring down rain here in Missouri, and I'm under a tornado warning. All right, make sure, you, make sure you're still recording while you're in the tornado. Oh yeah, I, I, I will be going up in the air. But welcome back. We have a guest with us on. Uh, he he he's come back for round. What is this? Two or two? Three? Yep. It's uh, round, you two. Think you'll be able to um, round two. Well, he's really uh, glutton for punishment, ain't he? Well, let's bring him on. <laughs> yeah, this is Lou Cagle. Uh, he's running for representative in Oklahoma District 84. How are you guys doing? Oh, well, it's good to be here. I'm glad to be back. I can take the beating. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we'll, we'll try to be a little bit easy on you. Uh, I think we were pretty. I was pretty tough on you on the last one. I know you gave me a hard time about marriage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> have you got Have you got married yet? Not yet. That's uh, December fifteenth. December fifteenth. Oh, that's just a few days after my birthday. Uh, but we did. Did you Did you get Did you Did you ever upgrade from the BB gun that you had? Oh my the god. <laughs> <laughs> no, I still I still carry the XD forty. Yeah, that's right. Me and you like the XD I, I like the XDM, you like the XD and and the non gun owner over there, uh Oklahoma Tom he 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 says he likes the Glock but he don't even own a gun, so I don't even know why he's even talking about it. Oh, you should be ashamed. Well, it's not, it's, it's, uh, I don't own one now. It's not that I've never had a gun. Remember, I, I had to shoot a gun in the military. <laughs> Man, I, don't want to hear I know about some liberals that were in the military that don't like guns. Yeah, yeah, yeah I no. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> they, 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 were the, they were the secretaries, want... though. That's what they were. I don't even want to hear about Oklahoma. I don't want to hear about Oklahoma Tom Cat's military experience. You know, he was in the Navy. You can't even tell me what a nautical mile is. Well, that's because I was in the Naval Air Force. Not the not. I, I didn't deal with the shit. But you know, I was on one. <laughs> when was the last time I was on? You guys talked about that time. You had this much time to look it up. <laughs> 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 I actually had to look I, it up and school him on it. 
had to come back and throw punches right back after last time. <laughs> well, it's been a crazy few weeks. Uh, well, tell us what you got going on. Well, uh, been talking to voters. Uh, I'll be really hitting it hard and heavy once it's rain lets up. Going door to door. I'm going to be sticking some signs in yards and hopefully getting some larger signs out there and really getting the name out there, letting people know where uh, we stand as a party and where I stand as a candidate. Yeah. Yeah, luckily, luckily, um, I'm actually getting invited to forums. Our candidate for governor, Chris Powell, was left out of a form of debate, whatever you want to call it, set up by the Oklahoman. But, are y'all uh, are y'all have are y'all having problems up there in Oklahoma getting in the debates with the with the with the two party uh, bushwhackers? I, know, I think Chris Powell has some stuff coming up, but we don't have any debates that I know of for my. Uh, district for, you know, a local race, but there are forums and stuff that I've been to that I've been invited to. So I'm, okay. I'm glad that it's not, it's not like, it's not like the presidential race where they're just going to leave you out completely. Yeah, we're fighting yeah. tooth and nail down here. We're fighting tooth and nail down here in Texas. They won't even let Mark Tippett's uh, uh, debate. They already had their debate. and the, uh, Well, I'm not sure. I don't think... I think they're fixing to have the go- uh, the governor the governor debate, but they won't let Mark Tippett's join. You know, uh, they they won't let let Rudolph play the playing the reindeer games. Yeah, I don't know I don't know where the media gets off saying, oh, we're unbiased, and yet they leave the candidate who is on the ballot out of a debate. Yeah. You know, you know, you know, you know. It's funny. I, I leave out. I, I made the reference. Uh, they left uh, Rudolph Rudolph out of the debate. You know, uh, they won't let Rudolph play any in the reindeer games. But it, it was Rudolph who uh, led them through the storm, wasn't it? Exactly. Oh, you, you, huh? got, you hit it right there. You hit it right there on the head, right there. Yeah, I guess you really could call it reindeer games. I mean, that's all they play. The uh, duopoly, the big two parties, is games. They yeah. don't actually know how to take anything seriously. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're playing the same game. That's the bad thing. You know, both both sides are pretty much doing the same thing, just in different ways and using you know different things to do it. I mean, both yeah, of them higher taxes and all that stuff. It's really scary to be in politics now as far as a candidate. Um, I, I played this, this clip on the last segment, and I want to play it for you. Um, and uh, When it's over with, I'll, I'll explain a little bit of the contents, and then uh, we'll go into what you think about it. Because, like I said, it's a scary business now to be in politics now. Uh, but here's that clip. Self-fulfilling kind. You demonize, and then you it, we call it the wrap-up smear. If you want to talk politics, you call it the wrap-up smear. You smear somebody with falsehoods and all the rest, and then you merchandise it. And then you write it, and they'll say, see, it's reported in the press that this, 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 and this. So they have that validation that the press reported the smear, and then it's called the wrap-up smear. Now I'm going to merchandise the press's report on the smear that we made. And it's, it's a tactic, and it's, it's, it's self-evident. But I think I'm worth the trouble. Now, now, let me put this in content so some of our listeners won't be uh, messaging us later. The content is, is she, this is Nancy Pelosi, and she is actually talking about this as a tactic of the Republicans. Okay, she's saying this is what Republicans do to Democrats. Okay, and like I, I mentioned uh, on the last segment, all through 2008, when Obama took office, and even until it's, – it's, it's worse now. Uh, yeah. You, it, it, being in politics, you don't know what – she just said you make up falsehoods, and then you leak it to the press – Then you merchandise it. I I asked uh, Oklahoma Tomcat, I said, how do these people come up with these T-shirts so fast? 
Yeah. It's, you get a, some, something happens today, tomorrow they got a protest and they got thousands of T-shirts for that protest. Well, it's not hard to print out a T-shirt, but yeah, they've they've already got the uh, talking points set up ahead of time. They've they've got a basic script. I mean, yeah, it's not may not be something actually written out, but the talking points are there, and uh, most of the people are just going to repeat the same thing over and over again. They're not going to pay attention to facts, and the pro- the problem here with uh, what she was saying is that both parties do it. I mean, if you look at the recent uh, Supreme Court nomination, the uh, whole fiasco there, stuff coming up. I mean, come on. The the lady said, "Oh, these these uh, witnesses were there," and then the witnesses were like, "No, this guy wasn't even at the party." You have to wonder where uh, yeah. that came up. And so they they're doing that with. Uh, I mean, come on. Have you heard of the October surprise? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, whole, yeah. Just go back to the Clintons with that one. You really think about what yeah. the Clintons did with October surprises. I'm yeah, not, I'm not saying they were all fake or anything. I'm saying I'm saying that if you don't have something, they're going to make it up on you. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you they're, if they're gonna, you are gonna, a threat, they're going to ruin your character and run you through the ground just just so they can uh, further their career in politics. If you exactly, if you are a threat to their their agenda, if you are gaining too much power, too much steam, uh, you're moving along like a like a bulldozer. I mean, you're just plowing through everything, and you and you have become a literal threat to their agenda. They will stop you with a wrap up smear. Look how quick, uh, you know, look how quick they did. Uh, uh, what's his name? The one that was wanting to do the nine 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 uh pizza thing. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, the talk show. Ah, uh... oh, shit. The guy that had the, his name. the guy that had, he he was running for president, and he was a black yep. conservative, and he was running on the Republican ticket, and he had the the nine 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 tax deal. And man, as soon as he that he was gaining he was gaining speed. He, he he uh, was the CEO of Papa John's. He was gaining speed and gaining speed, and then boom, allegation of uh, sexual assault come out, and he's gone. You don't hear nothing else from you. Yeah, that's all it takes with uh, a lot of people nowadays. It's just the allegation of sexual assault. There doesn't need to be any proof. Your character's already ruined right there, and you're going to lose votes with it. Yeah, and you know, and there's plenty of things that we can have against we, there's plenty of things that we could have talked bad or gone, uh, gone against Kavanaugh on, such as his for, uh, on his writings on the Fourth Amendment. Uh, right. There's plenty of things that we could go against. But my whole issue about the whole Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh situation, I didn't like him because of his Fourth Amendment st- stance. But is this a president we want to stand for everybody? Do we want false allegations do, against a libertarian? Do we want a false allegations against you, me, uh, Oklahoma Tomcat? Ju- do we want this to be the norm for us to shut down the political uh, 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 adversary just because we don't like them? No, it shouldn't be the norm. And that's the problem is that it's becoming the norm. Come on, where's – is the burden of proof supposed to lie on the defendant or the uh, – Accuser. I mean, for years in the United States, it's the burden of proof has lied lied with the accuser. Are we are we are we trying to change our system now? Is it is it going to be yeah, a? Yeah, uh, the, yeah, uh, the bad thing is this is really going back to you know uh, the lynch mob. You know uh, that that that's where we're headed. Yeah. You know where mob rules. You know. Well, I pointed out that yeah. this is just like the witch trials, because all it took was an mm-hmm. accusation against a, it's a against a female, and a, or male, and they they were burned at the stake. There there didn't have to be evidence. Mm-hmm. You just got accused of being a witch, and you were set to fire. Yeah, I was. I was talking to my fiance about uh, everything that's going on, and I told her I said whenever uh, I need to meet with another woman, I'm going to err on the side of my defense. I'm having her there with me. Yeah, I mean, exactly. yeah, that's what I do with my wife. 
Yeah, yeah when I was yeah, a I youth pastor. I won't meet alone with was, anybody. Yeah, yeah, when I was a youth pastor, when I was a youth pastor, my pastor told me, my senior pastor told me, he said, you do not, uh, if, if, you, if you're taking the kids home, he said, you drop off all the girls first. He said, you do not stay on the bus with them girls by yourself. You drop all them off yeah. first, and then you drop off the boys. And uh, exactly. he said, if at all possible, always have another adult on the bus with you. If you cannot, drop off all the girls first, period. Yeah. Well, nowadays, if I were a youth pastor, I, would, I wouldn't even drive a bus without another adult on there. For yeah, cameras, nowadays at least. you don't want yeah, yeah. Nowadays you don't want to do that. But the I fact mean, you hear about you hear was, about all the stuff that's public with the Catholic Church now. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So it's always that's it's always all. been a meme. It's always been a joke about the Catholic Church, but now they come up with they come out with proof of it actually happening. Yeah. And like yeah, we talked about that on our last show. I think it was, and uh, and it's and it's. Surprisingly, the the and I made the ac- accusation, uh, just going off of thought, just trying to stir up trouble. And I said, well, the the Pope is surprisingly quiet about all this stuff. And I said, normally if someone's quiet about stuff like that, he's involved in it. Yeah. Well, it's it's got to go to the top. I mean, how else is going to get covered up? You've got people up and down the. Uh... You know the leadership scale. You've got people all up and down that were involved in it. He's got to know something. And if he doesn't yeah. know anything, well, he can sure as hell do something about it. Yeah, I'm. Ta- you know what? I apologize. I'm taken away from what you're. Uh, what you're supposed. To- you're, you're here to talk about uh, your campaign and everything. Uh, <laughs> I just. I, man, there's just. So much junk going on right now. It's just hard to keep up with it, and uh, and I don't want to take a from, take away from you. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give the wheels back over to Oklahoma Tomcat since he's Oklahomian, and uh, well, it's, it's, and let y'all no problem, let y'all I mean, dish it out. It all it all kind of ties <laughs> together. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I can I, understand I, that thing, you know, to, to talk about stuff like that because uh, I mean, even with the. Uh, uh, local politicians, uh, because it does give everybody an idea of where you stand on uh, on uh, various issues, you know, because something like this could happen in Oklahoma. I mean, uh, exactly. so, I mean, it is good to know uh, where our local politician is. And that's one of the things that gets hard with uh, uh, these midterms is, you know, you got, uh, you're more, it's more local. And one of the things I, I experience with talking to people is a lot of people don't get into local, uh, the local elections and stuff like that, and that's kind of backwards from the way it should be. Um, because, in my opinion, the local guys are more important uh, because you're in our, you you are in our life, <laughs> not mine, unfortunately. Because uh, you know I'm, I'm jealous of '84 because they have a libertarian running and. I did. I I had no libertarian, you know, representative that was libertarian that was running in my district. Yeah, that's a shame. We do need we do need more libertarians to run for office in Oklahoma. I think. Yes. Yes, uh, we do. Yeah, they, it would help. It would help to grow the party here, which we are growing. Yeah. We, we've got a large number. I forgot what the last number is, but uh, we're grow, we're growing quite a bit. Yes. Yeah. Actually, we go pretty quick from uh, having not even having an election, that, you know, with any uh, libertarians in it. So it actually did go real quick. Uh, yeah, we've got a, we a two-way do, way race for state auditor. Yeah, yes, sir. and, and I, did, I did, I did vote for him. <laughs> I do, I do want to, yeah. I do want to say one thing. I do want to say one thing. Uh, uh, when McAfee runs for president, just wait until the dirt is dug up on him. <laughs> I, I think I think yeah. the next the next time we see a, uh, I don't know who it's going to be running for uh, president on the Libertarian ticket, but I think we're going to see an increase in numbers. 
And it's entirely that would be possible good. you could see a state go yellow. That 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 would be very good. Uh, yeah, you see to have a larger you see what's going on with Gary uh, Johnson's campaign, right? Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Um He's he's winning it he's winning in polls right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, right, he's, got, he's, got, he's got a lot of recognition. He's a libertarian uh, senator. Yeah, and he got a lot of recognition. So, uh, I mean, he did, he he did. Even though I I, I was kind of disappointed uh, uh, with him being chosen to uh, uh, nominate in uh, the libertarian uh, for president, uh, but I do give him credit for. Uh, Getting the Libertarian Party more recognized, you know, throughout the United States, because he, he did uh, do yeah. quite a bit. Yeah, there's there were certainly better candidates there, better people in the party yeah, to was. run for president. But I mean, he he did do a lot for uh, recognition. I'll hand it back. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But, but uh, back, how about back to how do we have there, I'm uh, glad. Canada. Uh, three and a half minutes. All right. Uh, when, when we get back, uh, one thing I do want to bring up is marriage in Oklahoma. <laughs> uh, being our, uh, our representative is uh, getting married soon. Um, but let me talk to everyone about uh, personal safety. It is your right to protect yourself. Uh, and and uh, all three of us will agree that you should have that right to uh, protect yourself in any way possible. Unfortunately, the federal government and state governments do restrict uh, us from being able to protect ourselves. But the one thing that uh, – uh, and that's a problem with anyone who travels for a living. Uh, Travis and I are both truck drivers, and we travel from the state to state, and it's extremely hard for a truck driver to carry uh, a gun. Uh, because of the fact the state laws are so different as you cross borders. However, there is a way that truck drivers can protect themselves and anyone who travels for a living, and that is a taser. Uh, in 45 of the 48 states that we travel in, uh, we are able to openly carry a taser with us and be able to use it in self-defense. And I highly recommend that everyone go to truckers-defense.com and check out the tasers that they sell. Uh, I recommend that uh, people who travel carry tasers. Uh, we, I've uh, talked about uh, a few shows back about a jogger who got killed uh, uh, just uh, working out in a park. So you know, it's it's highly recommended. Get it, get it for your uh, gift for a loved one, uh, for that uh, daughter or even son that's going to off to college. Um, Truckers-defense.com. Uh, both Travis and I have uh, our cases there. I highly recommend them. I highly recommend people be able to defend themselves. We'll be back after these messages. The Liberty National Network. Where do you want to go to lunch? I'm having a stroke. Did you hear what I said? I'm having a stroke. Why aren't you answering me? I'm having a stroke. When someone is having a stroke, they may not be able to say it with words, but their body language will tell you loud and clear. Look for FAST. F. Face drooping. A. Arm weakness. S. Speech difficulty. T. Time to call 911 immediately. Know the sudden signs. Spot a stroke fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. You may have doubts about health care sharing. I know we did. We studied literature about Samaritan Ministries, but we feared that it was just too risky. Instead, as our health insurance premiums went up each year, we would increase our deductible to reduce the premium. And then the inevitable happened. We had to use our insurance. We had a medical need that included tests, doctor visits, and even outpatient surgery treatment that totaled over $7,000. 
and it was all out of pocket. It took us three years to pay off, even after several of our health care providers reduced their charges. And we finally took a leap of faith and joined Samaritan. Each month, we get to give to an actual person with a medical need. We pray for them and put them in the hands of the Lord for physical, emotional, and financial strength and healing. There's no way to fully express that pleasure and joy. During the first year we were members, we had a medical need, and it was all provided for. And the strength, peace, and healing from prayer. Last year, our son was injured on a mission trip 1,200 miles from home. The bills for the emergency room, doctors, stitches, and prescriptions totaled $5,300. But every last cent was provided for. In fact, last year we had two more needs, and each time our Samaritan family came through. I worked in healthcare for 10 years, from front desk through billing. I would recommend Samaritan instead of any insurance product out there. Insurance has no assurances. In fact, it seems everything is written in such a way that there will be no assurance at your time of need. We just wish that we had trusted in God's provision sooner. It is such a blessing to come alongside our brothers and sisters in Christ and share in each other's health care burdens. And there's such a peace and joy knowing that God is answering our prayers, bringing healing and providing for our needs. Devin, a student at Hillsdale College. Here is President of Hillsdale College, Dr. Larry Arn, on what the founders meant by general welfare. The great preamble of our Constitution states that the purpose of the document is in part to promote the general welfare. Contrary to the modern understanding of that term, the founders understood welfare to mean public good or happiness. This was understood in accordance with the principles of the Declaration of Independence. Such happiness is contingent on securing to each citizen his natural rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Because this requires the government be limited, the powers of the federal government were enumerated and local matters were reserved to state authority. This was precisely intended to secure these inalienable rights and in turn promote the general welfare. This Constitution Minute was brought to you by Hillsdale College. To receive a free pocket constitution and declaration, go to constitutionminute.com. On what the founders meant by general welfare. Liberty National Network. Travis Pope may sound like a big bad gorilla, but he is really a soft, cuddly teddy bear. You are listening to Political TNT on the Liberty National Network. This is a pre recorded show, and therefore we are unable to take phone calls into the show. But please feel free to comment about the show wherever you see this show posted. Oh, oh, welcome back, back to Political, political TNT. TNT. <laughs> hey, you gotta stop interrupting me, man. I mean, hold on, I, I think I started first. You interrupted me, <laughs> and that's terrible because you interrupted the great one, and everything I do is great. 
And therefore, the show is great because I am great. My daughter is great because I'm great. And even my wife is great because I am great. And Oklahoma is great because I am great. <laughs> I'm, <waiting for> that. <laughs> I'm bringing back uh, Willie. I'm bringing back our guest. That was just too much for us right there. <laughs> Welcome so back to uh, I can't compete. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Uh, thanks, uh, by the way, thanks to uh, President Trump for teaching me that. <laughs> hey, you well, can't be too he's great. Got, he's got better words than you do. <laughs> yeah, you can't be too great. You can't be too great if you like this song. Uh, 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 even, even though she's messed up and uh, started getting into politics and all that, she is still a good singer. She's a great singer because I listen to her. So I don't even know what song that was. Yeah, I downloaded it just for him. Cause I, I call, I call, I called him one time, and I heard that song on the radio, and he was just singing to it and dancing to it, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> What, what song was it? That's Shake It Off. <laughs> yeah, uh, Shake It Off by Taylor Swift. Oh, my gosh. Did you hear what thing. Trump I'm, said? He likes her 25% less. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah Travis, I uh, was talking about that earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but back to our, back to our story. This the, what's going on in our society is just so bad. I mean, uh, now, now I read an article today from Politico. Uh, this is the article said that they uh, uh, Politico tweeted out that uh, the because of the loss of Kavanaugh that the left liberals need to be more ruthless. And I was saying to uh, Oklahoma Tomcat earlier today, I said, how, mo- how more ruthless can they be? I said, they're already shitting in the, ste- she- se- the streets. They're throwing crap on people. They're banging on doors. They're, they're sending rising to the, to the political leaders. They're, they're trying to blow up bridges. I said, the, the next part, what, how more ruthless is it? I mean, are they wanting a civil war? I said, half of them, I said, 90% of them don't even know what bathroom they can use. Much less use a gun. I don't know. If they want a civil yeah, war, they're going to have a tough, they're going to have a tough time fighting it because they don't even like guns. All right. <laughs> well, they don't do. I mean, what are, what, is they, what are they going to fight the civil war with? Are they, are they well, 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 we do. Uh, you know, actually, Democrats do have quite. Uh, I mean, this this could be dangerous. I mean, if we really look at it, because look at Democrat protests. I mean, they burn down whole yeah, cities. You're right. You're right. Uh, you wanna, I mean, they they, they, they do get serious ruthless. Look at it. I mean, uh, is, is uh, that what they're calling for? Is to drag people out in the street and start, uh, you know, beating them and uh, burning down towns, cities. Uh, I mean, they're bringing back the lynch mob. Yeah, I, they get violent with their protests. I mean, they're, they 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 yeah. bring weapons to their protests. They uh, they block cars, and I mean, come on, someone's going to block me from going to my destination, and they're banging on my car. I'm going to be scared. I'm going to be afraid for my life. Mm-hmm. But, I'll be honest; it would scare me. Yeah, but because I mean, they, they they don't fight with you know they uh, when they when they uh, uh, really uh, I mean it's it's really shocking because I I mean I, I do look at myself as a classic liberal you know back back when liberals really did care about other people you know but today this is this this, this is crazy with the way they're doing it. they they do not care about human life whatsoever. You don't even know yeah. what is going to happen. I mean, Rand Paul's neighbor broke his ribs. Yeah. <laughs> his neighbor. And, you know, they've still you got don't know threats. where the attack is going to come. Mm-hmm. They've still got the threats. You know, they've they've got to have a uh, sheriff's officer patrolling their street just to make sure they're safe. 
Yeah. His wife said he she sleeps with a gun under her pillow now over this. Yeah. They had to go back and redo the locks and redo the security system because she don't know. They're so terrified now that they carry – she's got to sleep with a gun under her bed now, in, under her pillow, a loaded gun, she said. This is how bad it's getting for our political system. I'm going to be honest. We are we are quite lucky here in Oklahoma so far. Yeah. We have, we have not had anything that bad. I think the worst it got was – the teacher walkout. I think that's that's the biggest protest I've seen in Oklahoma in my lifetime. Yeah, and that was a peaceful one. Violent. I mean, it was peaceful. No, nope. I'm gonna hand it to the teachers that were there. They, mm-hmm. they made well, their they voice heard. They knew what they were doing. The protests try to happen in Texas a little bit every now and then. They try to raise their ugly heads up, but they don't like the guns yeah. toting down there now. Because Texas, yeah, man, no, they, we're, just, we're just gonna shoot you. <laughs> we gotta hand it to some of these people in some of these states where this stuff has happened, or gun-friendly states, you know. And uh, you have to hand it to the gun owners that are in the, some of them cars. It's a miracle that nobody has been shot because of anything that's happened like that. Yeah, I'm. I'm really. I'm really surprised. Uh, when some of the t- protests that's happened in, But if you notice where all these Protests happen I, And I'm going to be straight up honest right here Where most of these protests These major protests Are in high re- uh, gun restricted areas Yeah You know You're not going to get those You're not going to get Antifa running down here in Texas uh, Protesting <laughs> and attacking folks in Texas Because you probably don't get shot by doing that uh, yeah, yeah, I, I can see that. <laughs> but but instead, they're protesting in uh, Washington D.C., where you're not allowed to have a gun in in, oh, yeah. in city limits. Uh, New York, uh, Chicago, uh, Portland, Oregon, uh, uh, Seattle, Washington, uh, California, where all these gun restrictions are. That's where they protest. They uh, they know where to protest. They're not stupid enough. They, they ain't gonna step down in Texas uh, and do that crap because they don't get shot. You bring that stuff down yeah. there, or or any other state that has uh, 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 your stand your ground laws, you will get shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can tell you that's for sure. Here in Oklahoma, I know quite a few people who carry yep. guns. I mean, yeah, okay, you go okay, to Walmart. Right. I, <laughs> there's there's at least two or three people in a Walmart uh, around Oklahoma City that are open carrying. Even more than that, mm-hmm. that have them concealed. My my yeah. grandmother concealed. She's a tiny little. She's a tiny lady. Nicest person you'll ever meet. Yet uh, she's got one that she carries on her all the time. <laughs> so we'll yeah. see a easy tell, target there and I tell you what, which, my, my which, when it comes to guns, uh that is uh one of the things that gets me with people who are against guns is really the you know, if the, for those that are against guns and uh get people protect themselves with guns, uh you put Actually, your most defense, your uh, a lot of women and uh, uh, small, smaller people, people, you know, at high risk, you know, because uh, those are the exactly. ones that yeah. really need got more than anyone else. Uh, well, that goes back to that. Goes back to that conversation about sexual assaults. If you want to end sexual mm-hmm. assault, yeah. arm everyone. Yeah. Yeah, uh, speaking of speaking of guns, my my stepdad. Okay, this, you, now now y'all now y'all get ready. Y'all got y'all's handkerchiefs up ready because y'all don't start drooling when I say it. My my stepdad has a revolver. Okay, chrome uh, electro chrome plated Colt forty five with a bone handle revolver, and uh, and. And he walks around the old uh, Western style belt on it with the with the gut with the bullets in the belt 
and that's how he walks around. Hmm. Now, now clean the drool <laughs> off. Wants his it, he mouth wants to see. He wants to see that. And he's good he, at he's it like too. I've seen him. Pro- he's like, he doesn't carry that for protection. He carries it to show off. Show, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. That's what I think. That's the only reason I would say something like that is to be like, look what I got. <laughs> yeah, I've watched him stand in front of the mirror drawing that thing over and over and over. And he's pretty fast at drawing that old thing. And he hits his mark yeah, they do. when he draws it. They do have quick draw competitions. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's what he carries, man. A big old Colt 45 electro, uh, chrome electro plated, uh, bone handle, uh, revolver in the, in the old style Western leather, leather holster. Sounds nice. Now, 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 now William's on the online looking to see if he can buy him one like that. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> No, I, I think I think one, William right? carries one for the actual <laughs> reason to carry one, <laughs> not a show gun. I carry, I can't, yeah, no, I I carry one that you know I I would prefer some capacity to my firearm. <laughs> <laughs> hey William, I got a question for you. Um, you posted uh, on Facebook, which I caught and I did answer, um, about marriage. And your question yes. was, I'm going to paraphrase because I can't find it now, but um, it, it was uh, in reference to how do you view marriage, uh, religious or uh, uh, a contract? Uh, yeah, civil contract, I think is what I said. Right, yeah, civil contract, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and I have a question for you because I, I was a, one of the big, big pushers for uh, – uh, Oklahoma getting rid of the marriage license, and and my whole idea was to get the Oklahoma government completely, completely out of marriage because the way I look at it is now on a religious because in fact I am a Christian and on my personal religious belief is uh, marriage is not given to government it's given you know it's given to me by God. So he's the only one that should make the rules, which I follow. I don't force other people to follow him. Um, and with the people who are not Christians or not don't have any uh, religious beliefs at all, they, you know, I, I say you can still make it a civil contract simply by drawing up a contract with the person you're about to get married with, which you, if anything goes wrong, you can take it to court, you know, uh, and contracts are honored. But um, in Oklahoma, the last uh, they they did get rid of the marriage license, right? Well, I think I think we could get rid of a marriage license. I don't see a problem in doing it, and yeah. it's something that I would try to do is get rid of the marriage license. And I think yeah. um, if you really want to look at it, the Supreme Court should have something to say about this because if we look at it as a religious institution. Then uh, there should be no law about it. Yeah, um, and, and uh, in which I, I'm, I'm for you know opening up to you know let everyone you know because really re- uh, marriage is a personal thing, and it should be yeah. that way. You know, it shouldn't. Uh, one of the things I say has created a huge uh, divorce rate is government be- getting involved in it. Because, I mean, then I saw this in the military. Uh, People would get married simply because financially, uh, when it comes to your pay and uh, uh, lots of other uh, things such as benefits and stuff like that, it was a lot better if you were married. Uh, And then people would get divorced shortly after because they rushed into it, you know, for the financial benefits. Yeah. My my fiance and I we discussed uh, saying let's forget about getting a marriage license. We'll go through the ceremony and all because you know that's for the family. That's you know saying hey we're look we're married you know. Uh, mm-hmm. But we don't need a marriage license to be married. And right. We we view it as it's between her, me, and God. 
but because of the uh, you know the tax issue, um, we're 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 getting the license because it pays better in the long run to have the license and uh, get right. some of the tax breaks. But yeah, if we now, can fix um, the tax system, we I, won't have to worry about that. Well, yeah. actually, no, technically, I don't, I don't techni- technically, the marriage is not between you, her, and God. Because according to a biblical marriage, is that her dad is the one who oversees the marriage. He's actually the priest that's supposed to marry her off to you. And and according to the Bible, he's supposed to give you money to marry her. <laughs> I am not going to push that right now. <laughs> Well, I'm just trying to throw it out there. That is a true biblical marriage. If you read everywhere, every marriage that, in the Bible, that there was always the the, the older father dude. was the pr- both of them. That's the way it was back then. Okay, I'm, after this show, I'm, I'm going to be asking you for uh, context. I'm going to ask for verses. <laughs> 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 as, a, as, a, as a representative, uh, someone who's running for uh, to be representative, um, would it be possible? I mean, see, my, my thing is, to, you know, for, the government should be completely out of it. There's no reason for government to even know uh, who's even married. Um, number one, is that a possible thing to do in, as, for a state to do that? And number two, how do you feel about how far should government be involved? Because when I read uh, government uh, that Oklahoma getting out, uh, getting rid of the marriage license, what I read is they're still getting involved in marriage because you still have to go down and you know have the papers filed. I mean, uh, and all this, you know, still has to be on file and everything, <laughs> even if yeah, you decide still- to not have the ceremony or have a minister actually doing it. Yeah, we still have to have the uh, paperwork. We still have to have a marriage license right now. But I certainly, I certainly think that it's possible that a state could get rid of marriage licenses. It'd be as simple as abolishing that need. It's, it's not, it's not going to be a big deal. The problem, the problem with it is uh, getting the people in office to help out with it. You know, getting other mm-hmm. representatives and of course the Senate to help out. But I think, I think if you really Give the right argument of it's a religious institution. You'll get Republicans on board with it, and then if you go and take that same idea to the Democrats and tell them if it's a religious institution, the state is not involved. So we we don't have to worry about uh, making gay marriage legal because then technically it is legal. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. I've gotten into arguments with uh, people, mostly Democrats. Uh, well, actually, both sides, because Republicans are also wanting government to still be involved. Um, but I, I'd get more arguments with the Democrats over it because they would they they would bring up you know uh, all but but you need government to protect you, which is always the thing. I'm like, oh, so you want the false protection? You want your rights to be taken away so you can be you know because government ain't protecting your marriage. Trust me. Uh, yeah, but you know, no, I would bring up the fact that hey, you can have a contract. I mean, what's wrong with that? <laughs> well, if it's a civil contract, the state's involved in that. Government is involved in a civil contract. Yeah, Who's yeah, going yeah, to enforce the contract? Because, I mean, but but see, with, with a civil contract, though, the, the advantage over it rather than having a law is the fact that uh, if, if you have true freedom over it, that it. it the contract could be whatever the two people want, you know, instead of having government decide how to split your finances up, you know. But if it's a civil, if it's a civil contract, you're allowing the government a foothold in it. The government still has a clause into your marriage. If you take if you take the government out completely, then your marriage is up to you, your spouse, and whoever you worship, if you worship anyone. It's only between you yeah, guys. Your wife, if, if you and your spouse doesn't agree on stuff, then you do need uh, some type of paper drawn up before you even get married, uh, stating how is it going to be. And then you need somebody to enforce that contract, 
which is where I believe government should come in, is if there's a dispute, how is it going to be handled? But if you don't have a contract, oh, yeah, you do, you do, yeah, ahead of time. In a contract, you do need third-party arbitration whenever yeah. you're, uh, when there is a dispute between a contract. That is more you know, the duties of the government. You know, taxation is theft anyways. If we didn't have to worry about taxes, oh, yeah. we wouldn't have to worry about a marriage contract. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you, you're right about that. If we didn't have to worry about taxes, but unfortunately, unfortunately, we don't live in an ideal society. Right. So we do we do need a government. I'm not an anarchist. I'm a libertarian. Some government is necessary. Yes. Just I want it as small as possible. Right. Exactly. You know, and I think. Uh, uh, for those, I mean, of course, me myself, I'd be, uh, I'm against, uh, personally against contracts and marriage, you know, because I do agree with you that, in my, in as far as my family goes, marriage is a religious uh, institution. But you know, I'm, I I make these debates with atheists also, you know, as far as, of course, you can't bring an atheist into agreeing with you that it's a religious institution. Therefore, you know, I bring up, well, there is another way rather than having a marriage law, which is false security, you know, rather, why not before getting married, if you don't believe it's a religious institution and you uh, think you need protection, draw up a contract, you know, uh, I know I'm not, I'm not saying do away that, with you know. contracts, you know. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I in no way in saying do away with contracts. I'm just that the discussion that was on Facebook about marriage had to do with how you view marriage. What is your how right. do you define it? Is it religious or is it civil? Right, right. Wait, wait, that's a good question, you know, because I, I did uh, scroll through there to see uh, as far as your Facebook friends go uh, <laughs> where they all stood, <laughs> but. Uh, uh, because I mean, you're going to get a lot of different views on who is, you know, in charge of marriage. Who should have the control over marriage? You know, uh, is it God? Is it government? Or for the libertarian atheist libertarians, is it just between the couple? You know, is it just a personal agreement? You know, um, yeah. so that was a good discussion. It was. And then I'd want to bring that up because, of course, you know, you're you're getting married, so I'm like, well, how, how do you feel about government involvement in it? <laughs> well, what's the and where would you vote as far as if it is brought up in Oklahoma? You know, where how would you vote on you know that that subject of, as far as marriage goes? Yeah, I would definitely I would definitely get rid of a marriage license. Yeah, the contract oh, needs to be oh. there for people who choose Wait. that option. But it should be a requirement. Yeah. Uh, William, we can fix that to go to break again. Can you stay for the last half? I think I could stay for a short time. I'm, that's I'm fine. Cause I got one question. <laughs> uh, that's fine. I, I got I got a question I want to ask you because this is really driving me insane. And since you're in Oklahoma, this is actually an Oklahoma issue. And with that, we will come. We will be back after these messages. And I know what the issue is. (laughs) (laughs) The Liberty National Network. Where do you want to go to lunch? I'm having a stroke. Did you hear what I said? I'm having a stroke. Why aren't you answering me? I'm having a stroke. When someone is having a stroke, they may not be able to say it with words, but their body language will tell you loud and clear. Look for FAST. F. Face drooping. A. Arm weakness. S. Speech difficulty. T. Time to call 911 immediately. Know the sudden signs. Spot a stroke fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. existing human that we know of is the 5,300 year old body of a man frozen in ice that was uncovered by climbers in the Italian Alps in 1991. His name is Otzi, the Iceman, 
And aside from being extremely well preserved, he was remarkable for another reason. The 61 tattoos that adorned his body. For as long as we've been on the planet, humankind has marked their bodies to commemorate important events, imply meaning, or signify value. Everything from a sailor's inscription of a lost lover's name to the tribal markings of indigenous peoples denoting a ceremony or achievement reminds us that using permanent markings can be one of the clearest ways to show what's meaningful to us. As it turns out, we aren't the only ones who do this. God does too. Listen to this powerful verse in Isaiah. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. That verse is part of a passage where God reminds his people that he has not forgotten them, even during an extended period of captivity. And while the most important part may seem to be the fact that God has engraved or tattooed the name of his people on his body, it's worth considering where that engraving occurs. His hands. A lot has changed in the lives of human beings over the years, but we still use our hands for nearly every daily task imaginable. We look at them hundreds, maybe even thousands of times each day. The implication here is powerful, that our names are never out of God's sight. I want us to think about that. If your own life's commitments were to be written on your hands, what would they be? Work, school, your career? Or would they be the names of people in your life, family members, friends, and those inside or outside of your church community? It's often easy to lose sight of what matters amidst the hustle and bustle of our lives, but I think this verse and the principle it embodies ought to be a powerful reminder to all of us of two things. To put first things first in our lives and remind us of our Heavenly Father's love for us. I want you to picture his hands right now, the same hands that knit the galaxies together, and then picture your own name, tattooed in his skin. Powerful, isn't it? Our God has marked us into his heart as permanently as ink sets into our skin. We are always in his mind, always in his eyes, and always in his heart. I'm Joseph Tkach, speaking of life. I'm Joy, a student at Hillsdale College. Here is President of Hillsdale College, Dr. Larry Arn, on why the Constitution limits government. James Madison writes in Federalist 51 that men are not angels. Their passions and self-interest often get the better of their reason and sense of justice. So we need government in order to protect our rights against those who would take them away. But for the same reason, Madison writes, government must be limited because people in government have passions and interests too. Many Americans today forget this, supposing that we can do away with constitutional limits on government, supposing that the unelected bureaucrats being put in charge of our health care, for example, will rule as if they are angels. If Madison was correct about human nature, this is foolish and dangerous. This Constitution Minute was brought to you by Hillsdale College. To receive a free pocket constitution and declaration, go to constitutionminute.com. The Oklahoma Tomcat thinks he is a big tough cat, but he is actually as harmless as a kitten. You are listening to Political TNT on the Liberty National Network. If you want to be part of the show, dial 914-338-1906 and then press 1. And to that, I'm not a kitten. <laughs> Yeah, you are. Welcome back. And we're on our last ha- our last uh, segment of the show, and and like I told uh, uh, future representative Cagle uh, that I have a question for him. All right, let me break yes. it down. I work for a company in Oklahoma, but I am a Texas resident. I live, matter of fact, I live all the way down on the coast near uh, Houston. And I looked at my pay stub the other day, and I noticed something. That Oklahoma is raping non-citizens by taking taxes out of their paycheck. Yeah. Yeah. 
when we when we file taxes here in Oklahoma, it's asked if we're a resident or a non-resident. <laughs> it's it's not right that we charge people from out of state that come in from from other states to work here in our state. It's not right that we charge them income tax. They live in another state. They have no say in our state's government. So they're tied with our representation, which was against the founding fathers. So I now what? check this out. Now check this they, out. They, they have a guy that without representation. Yeah, yeah it is, it's, without it's taxation without representation. It's exactly what it is. Yep. You have no representation in our state's government, and yet they are now still taxing you. Yeah, now check this out, okay? Luckily, I live in Texas, which we don't have an income tax. That makes Texas the greatest state in the union. But whoa, 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 uh, we whoa. have, yeah, no, hold on yes. a second. <laughs> hold on a second. <laughs> hold, hold hold on, on. You are fake yeah. news. <laughs> I agree with that one. He is fake news. Uh, but I, I, if you're gonna keep on about that, I'm not coming back to this show. Well, no, 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 we do have to go on the top tag here, and I am the great one. <laughs> that that is true. That is true. It's only because I'm on the internet. But if you keep talking but, about that, I'm gonna have to say CNN is more credible. Oh, man. <laughs> but, now check this out. Okay, now I, I, I've laid it down. Texas doesn't have an income tax. But we have a guy that works for the same company that works in Washington, that lives in Washington State. And they do have an income tax. And he's also being taxed by Oklahoma, Washington, and the federal government not including the state sales taxes that he has to pay in between. He is being taxed out the wazoos in his life. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. If I go down to Texas, uh, you guys have a tax on your fuel, right? Yeah. You guys have sales tax, right? Yeah. Should I have to pay those taxes? Uh, I don't think so. I disagree. I disagree to an extent. While I believe taxation is theft, and in an ideal world, we should get rid of taxes, that's how the government's making money to, uh, for one, you're going to rely on some of the services from that, uh, from that state that you're traveling through and staying in. And so... You're going to have to pay for something. You know? I mean, not everything's free. The government, yeah. the government uh, is there to create some re- some regulation, but, however, income tax is wrong. Like here, yeah, I expect yeah. you to pay your uh, yeah, sales tax or anything agree. like that. Because there, there are services that you use. However, income tax, you shouldn't be charged. Yeah, I, okay. okay. I agree with that. <laughs> Now, now that we got to that part, I would say yes, I do agree with the, uh, and, and I would prefer a national sales tax as well instead of an income tax. Yeah. I would prefer a national sales tax written in the Constitution so that way they can't raise it every time they feel like they need to. It needs to be one set price uh, forever cemented in the Constitution so that way they cannot change it from year to year on whoever's political gain is in the office and therefore leaving it that I'm gonna way. Revise, I'm going to revise what you're saying. Not a set price, but a set percentage. Yeah. Yes, that percentage, yeah. See, that's yeah, the thing I, I get. Uh, I, that, that drives me nuts, uh, Cat, uh, That's the thing that drives me nuts with what's going on in Oklahoma. Because even under the Republicans, they keep on talking about raising taxes, raising taxes, raising taxes. You know, they try to find other ways to, to bring in more taxes. If you have a set percentage, why would you ever have to raise it? Uh, when the economy is doing good, exactly. you'll bring more money in. If the economy does bad, you'll bring less money in. You know, it, it, to me, the percentage yeah. should be set because of the fact that you'll get in more money when everything is going good. 
You know, and if it's yeah. not that good, why would you want more? Why would you want the poor to be paying more taxes when? And yes, the poor pays taxes, people, because uh, I mean we're taxed for everything. Why would you want them paying more taxes when the economy is doing so bad? You know, it, it makes no sense to me. So I, I love well, what you I said, said there. I, a set percentage. Yeah, because we just yeah, we just raised I'll taxes. We just we just mm-hmm. we just added an extra fuel tax and uh, a hotel tax, cigarette tax. Yeah, we just yeah. we just added a bunch more taxes. Yeah, I sat down one day and I looked up the population of the of the United States. Okay, uh, and I did the math, and uh, and then I then I calculated the pop the the tourism that comes to to the United States each year. Okay, and I calculated that and I said, now what if every person, every pop person in the United States spent one hundred dollars uh, a week? Okay. And then I said, and out of that eight hundred dollars, they had to pay an eight percent tax, just, just like in Texas. Texas, we have an eight percent tax on our stuff, okay, or zero point eight percent tax, okay. Now, what if uh, do we charge that on the same thing on the federal level? And everybody spent a hundred dollars that week. That's about eight dollars, eight dollars on taxes. My findings came mm-hmm. up. That the federal government, just in sales tax alone, doing it that way, would bring more in than they do on their national income tax and then turn around and giving it back to them every year. And no one would have to file an income tax. Nobody would have to worry about the federal I- the IRS kicking in your door, taking all your property. If it was just a straight 8% tax, they would bring, bring in more money than they than they do right now currently with the income tax, with only fifty percent, uh, less than fifty percent of the people paying taxes. That was my calculation. Uh, they would bring in one bi- They would bring in one billion dollars more than what they would uh, would take it on just regular taxes, uh, income tax. That was my calculation. One billion dollars more than that what they're bringing in right now. How much are we bringing in right now? <laughs> I'd have to look that up. I know it's only about, I think they said it was like only 48% of the people are actually paying taxes. My plan would put 100% of people paying uh, uh, sales tax, uh, including tourists. So they would bring in $1 billion more than what they're currently bringing in. Okay, you said including tourists. Yeah. Okay, because I just did the math. <laughs> I was sitting here doing math while you were talking, and uh, if we just go off of eight uh, percent on a hundred dollars per person in the United States, that's one hundred and thirty-five billion dollars. That's only if it's a hundred dollars a week. We know yeah. that there's more spent. But yeah, that's yeah. I'm there's just, more this, spin. Yeah, yeah. But I got a question for you, Kevin, because uh, then, since we're bringing up the taxes and stuff, and I have ha- uh, had people ask me to ask the people run. Uh, I asked uh, Rex this question and uh, Powell and uh, 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 Joe Exotic. So uh, since we're bringing it up, and you are running as a representative, so you will have a say in uh, taxes and all, uh, would you be for getting rid of the income tax and be for a uh, uh, sales tax instead? Yes. Cool. And yes. how about property tax? I think that's that too. If you already own the property, why do you keep on paying taxes on it? Of course, that's more local. <laughs> I've got people in my yeah, town that's, that. Yeah, that's, that's local. That's, I, I won't yeah, be able, I be able to do anything about it. I mean, I, yeah, I could yeah. do something about it, but 
There would be there's a lot you would have to uh do to tackle stuff like that. But yeah, income yeah. tax I think is something that we should we should tackle right now. Get rid of income yeah, tax yeah, and just have yeah, the state sales tax. You know, we might have to raise you might have to raise the state uh, sales tax a bit, but Yeah, because what Travis said, well, you know, I know, that's, I know. That, that is really unfair. Uh, that, uh, you know, because, uh, you know, I, I worked for companies in Iowa, and I've never been charged. In fact, when Travis brought this up, I was like, uh, what? No, they shouldn't be taking money out. Because I've worked in companies for companies in other states, and I've never been double charged. Man, if I was charged both Oklahoma and Iowa's taxes, I'd be like, oh, this is too expensive for me to work here. Contrary to popular belief, yeah. truck drivers do not make that much money. <laughs> <laughs> you make more than teachers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we know you need to go so you can eat. I just had to hold you over for a little bit there. And I appreciate you coming on the show. And we always enjoy oh. having other people because he gets boring to talk to sometimes. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, it's the Texan that gets boring to talk to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Before you leave, though, if you will give a quick okay. plug for your uh, website, yeah. uh, how can people get a hold of you? And uh, everyone, everyone, even if you're not in District 84, we need to get these libertarians in, especially the representatives and the Senate. Uh, so, how well, can, can people get a hold of you guys. to help you? Uh, Best plug is social media uh, at Cagle for HD84 or uh, William Cagle for HD84 uh, on Facebook. All right. Thank you so much for being on our show and putting up with our uh, 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 Texan. I know you're hard to handle sometimes. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I, I'm happy, I was happy to be here and I look forward to being back. Thank you. And Thank you're you. always welcome you're back. Welcome we back enjoy it. Yes. Uh, you guys have a good evening. You too. You too. And, and we do need to, uh, I mean, even people outside the district, I mean, unfortunately, I can't vote for him, you know, but uh, we all need to get these representatives and senators uh uh, elected because they're the ones that actually make the laws and uh, can say yay and no, uh, yay or uh, nay to them. So, I yeah. mean, even people outside our district, we need to get them in. Yeah, and you know, and I and I really enjoy having the libertarians coming on here and talking with us, and because we we try to have a lot of fun on this show, and 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 uh, and, uh, and we need to get we need to get a. Uh, uh, Kerry McCannon back on here too because he's that boy. Uh, he, we have to let him have the whole show because he talks so much. He, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, well, the good news is we will have Team Bell on uh, the show, um, and uh, we are also scheduled to have Lee Miller, uh, both them uh, running in Oklahoma. I think William's still with us. <laughs> Is he? Uh, yeah, I was waiting for uh, he, uh, <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, we still got 10 minutes left. If you want to stay, you can stay. Yeah, we got only 10 minutes left. Oh, yeah, stay for the ending. Oh, okay, cool. I know it goes, it, it, go, it goes you made, so fast. You made it sound like you were going to break and... <laughs> no, well, oh, no more break. The next break is at the end of the show. Yeah, the next break is at the end of the show, and you and you and you, told me you had to go. You you was hungry, you know. So I was kind, of, you know, thinking for thinking out for the Oklahomian there, because we we wanted to make sure you got got your eating eating done, you know. Uh, <laughs> well, we do eat better than you guys do. Yeah, yeah, we do. No, you, no. <laughs> You can't beat us on barbecue. You might beat us in. Oh, by the way, we did win the OU game this last week too. So, go Longhorns. Okay, hold, ah, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. We still have a Stoops, and that's our problem. 
<laughs> it's uh, we're not used to losing. I'm sorry. No, we're not. That's uh, all right. And bro. Like, yeah, the, you know that you know that he had to brag about the fact they won this time, right? Yeah, it's a new I, beginning. I, I do, we beat OU. Oh, yeah. <laughs> new beginning. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we had to share it. I mean, you know, we can't let you lose all the time, or else you'll never want to play us again. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. She wasn't ready. She wasn't ready. No, <laughs> no. All right. He wasn't ready for the OU throw in. <laughs> uh, no, we have a lot of we have a lot of fun on here, and, the, and when we get when we get uh, having fun and talking about issues and laughing about issues and uh, and how it's just the time flies so fast. I, I told him sometimes, man. Sometimes we just need that third hour sometimes because we have so much fun mm-hmm. on here. You know, I was I was having a conversation about Texas and Oklahoma. We uh we have this rivalry going on where, you know, we know Oklahoma's better than Texas and everything. You guys think you guys are. But um despite all that, I think if Texas were to secede from the union, I think Oklahoma would fall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I guess probably true because I mean but 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 you know what though? But you know, you know why Oklahoma wins though all the games, right? Why? Because they're recruiting all the Texans down there to come to their their college, <laughs> <laughs> and we're recruiting all the Oklahomans to come down there. I mean, of course. If you guys, we'll if you guys had a better college, uh, if you guys had a better college, then maybe you guys could keep your Texans. Oh, uh, we're, we're not paying them. That's a good here. point. Good point. <laughs> yeah, I hate to say, it, yeah, the government colleges, but free market much? <laughs> <laughs> we're not, we're not, we're not paying them down there. <laughs> you know what you call, you know what you call a UT graduate five years after they graduate, don't you? What butt hurt? Moss. <laughs> Oh my gosh! <laughs> I'm, 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 regretting, I'm, I'm regretting this last part. I'm regretting this last part. <laughs> I should have gone and dinner. <laughs> well, you know, you're probably right there, uh, Kaggle. I mean, if uh, Texas ever did succeed, uh, Oklahoma probably would follow. Because even though we had this oh, rivalry, yeah. there is a lot of similarity. Uh, between Texas and Oklahoma, which is probably why we fight so much. Well, yeah, it probably Oklahoma, is, but... Oklahoma, Oklahoma wouldn't follow if Texas seceded, because if, seced, if Texas seceded, Oklahoma would would already be seceded with us, because Oklahoma is the biggest county of Texas. Oh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. We have an explosion here coming up. We got this explosion coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, she had something to push me. <laughs> I guess Oklahoma you're right. is you're, the biggest you're right. county. <laughs> yeah, you're right, you're right. We love you guys so much, we named a county of ours after you. See? I <laughs> know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We do have a, a Texas county. Uh, up there in the panhandle. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's furthest away from here, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, not the desert. <laughs> yeah, it's, the just, it's, just, it's just quite a homage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have way too much fun on here. All, all, you know, all we need now is beer to be drinking between all of us, and we'd be really having fun. You just think about that. If we all sat down one day, we we, we met up someplace to get on, on online together to do a show, and we were all drinking beer. 
How do you think that show would end? I'd be the only well, sober one. I'd be. I know, I know. I'd be sober. I don't even like beer. <laughs> I don't need. I don't need Travis. <laughs> I, I don't. I can't uh, stand beer. Uh, uh, well, we'll just give you some whiskey then. I'd be fine with that. <laughs> okay, I'd be the only that, sober one. <laughs> Yeah, he would have to drive the car because I'd be tore up from the floor up if we got some Jack Daniels out there. Look at us talking about <laughs> drinking Tennessee whiskey. <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't drink in excess. I don't even remember the last time I had a drink, though. It, I think it was a couple of years hey. ago. Yeah, I have to be on the opposite end of that. I don't know when the last time I drank is. I really don't drink after my mom passed away from uh, alcohol poisoning. Well, not poisoning. She drank so much that she got cirrhosis of the liver. And uh, and ever since then, I haven't really drank anything. I think I've probably I had... It was, early, it was early this year that I had a drink. I think I've had probably five drinks since my mom passed away. Uh, yeah. from alcohol uh, from uh, uh, cirrhosis of the liver. I'm sorry. So she drank. She ba- she basically drank herself to death. So I hardly ever drink. I think about my kids yeah. too much. I got four of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, which they're about to. Dr- which they're about ready to drive me to drinking. I'm not saying here. Reward if you're not drinking. You got more drunk. I might tell someone what I really think about them. <laughs> well, we got two and a half minutes left. Uh, do you want to say anything else for our show here, William? Um, Future. I think I covered everything. Future Representative Cagle. How does that sound? Uh, that, that sounds good. That sounds really good. I like that. Like Representative Cagle. Well, I'm yep. going to be, I'm going to co- come protest at your door if we don't get these taxes taken care of up there. <laughs> Please do. Please do. <laughs> I, would, I would love for that. <laughs> and then, I, then I'll drive you down to uh, Majority Leader's door, and we will both be out there protesting. <laughs> sounds good. That sounds great. Yeah. Well, uh, if, if you guys missed any of the show or any of our shows, uh, you can catch us on Stitcher. Uh, in fact, you can catch us on a lot of uh, podcasts. We 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 have really expanded. Uh, just go to P T A T. That's Paula Tango Alpha Tango dot show, and. Yeah, uh, check out our website, and on our website you will see a list of all the podcasts where you can see our uh, view our show. Uh, and please do comment and hit that like button if you uh, hear us on any of the podcasts, even if you disagree with us. Uh, Travis and I love it. Even if you disagree with us, please go ahead and comment. Uh, just be re- just remember this one warning: we do believe in freedom of speech. And oh, they, they don't believe in that. I know. I don't really believe they should have the words. <laughs> <laughs> With that, we will see y'all. Well, we'll do our next show Friday. Thursday. Friday. See y'all Friday. Well, yeah, Friday. Y'all take it easy. Friday. All right.